What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immodernation. Now a lot of you are probably wondering where I've been for the last couple of weeks. I'm fine, thanks for asking. And secondly, I've had some personal issues that I've needed to deal with over the last few weeks, but I'm back and I've got a new video. I just wanna let you know I've got a lot of videos coming. Uh, one is a new series I'm starting called Mod Challenge, where I take normal electronic items and I modify them. You might have seen a, a preview of one of those items. Um, I'm not gonna say that it's to the left of me right now, but you might already be looking at one of them. I'm also gonna be doing an update on the LCD side panel kit, as well as releasing a newsletter talking about that. So a lot of things coming up, but one of the things that I haven't done is a PC project, and that's why you're all here. So I've noticed a lot of tech YouTube channels do this thing where somebody brings them in a computer and they repair it and they look over it, you know, give you, the viewer, tips and hints as to what you can do to get a computer up and running. Now, I am not like a lot of other YouTube channels. However, recently, a friend of a friend of mine approached me with her computer saying that she couldn't get it up and running. So I thought, uh, I'm not gonna pass up the opportunity for free content. Remember, this is what you content gremlins wanted. And also, why not do something that everybody else is already doing? I'm gonna let you think about that one for a second. All right, so we're gonna start by taking a look at the side of the computer. This is an NZXT case. I don't know what type of NZXT case this is. It looks like it's not in production anymore. Shout out to Razer. Got the Razer sticker on the side. Uh, Turtle Beach Audio, there's no sound card in here whatsoever. It's like slapping a VTEC sticker on a Toyota. Got an EVGA badge up here. Hopefully there's an EVGA card in there. Of course, the obligatory tape on the window so that's what we can see from here i'm also noticing on the back we've got uh looks like a wi-fi card with some sort of switch probably for lighting oh man i don't know if you can see this over here this usb port is hosed that is not what a usb port is supposed to look like let's go ahead and get the side panel off holy shit. So we're looking at a rat's nest of stuff in here. Oh, we got it. We do have an EVGA card. Here's a 750 Ti. That's a respectable card. Got a Corsair power supply. Looks like it's the 450 watts. AMD processor. It's got USB 3.0, so uh, it's relatively newer. Got a, a blue inverter over here, probably for some cold cathode fluorescent lighting of some sort. Shout out to Comp USA. Flashback 99. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what CompUSA is, and maybe you were born in the early 2000s, CompUSA was a lot like Circuit City. No? No Circuit City? Okay, Best Buy, all right? It was like Best Buy for computers back in the 90s. Don't make me feel old. Well, that's kind of interesting. Look at this over here. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. This SD RAM chip is a little bit higher than these other two RAM DIMMs. One of the big things that I'm noticing here is that there's a lot of disconnected cables. So it looks like somebody went through, disconnected some stuff, or maybe these cables became disconnected and uh, we need to connect them back together. All right, so let's talk about what I'm gonna do here. So first of all, I'm gonna remove all of the cables from the inside so we can get a clean idea of what the inside looks like. I'm gonna remove the back panel, see what our cable management looks like because as I'm putting the system back together, I wanna do a little bit of cable management. This is gonna improve the airflow through the system. Um, it will also make the front a little bit cleaner, especially since this case has a window. If you wanna be able to see inside your system, at least it should look relatively tidy. So we're gonna go ahead and get the cathode out. Nobody uses CCFL lights anymore. All right, we'll start from there and see how it goes. We're gonna need some tools. So I've got my iFixit tool kit here. It's got uh, plenty of bits. This is the Manta kit. Um, it's got every bit I can need. Really, I think I'm only gonna need the Phillips and the flathead screwdriver, but you never know. It's good to always have the extras. Um, in order to cut the zip ties that I've noticed in here, I'm gonna use um, some wire cutters. Usually like a pair of scissors would work just fine, but I happen to have these around. These are cobalt uh, cutters, and um, I'll see if I can put up a link in the video description below. 
Since we're not using the cool cathode fluorescent lighting, I can go ahead and remove this switch from the back panel. So these are the front I.O. Um, connectors. I'm going to go ahead and just clip these off. I might just put them back together with uh, electrical tape instead of a zip tie. Zip tie kind of adds some unnecessary bulk. Just be careful when you're doing this to not cut the wires themselves. It's really easy to snip one of these small wires if you're not watching what you're doing. Let's just take these out for the time being. Okay, so this is a Hitachi Desk Star. These are amazing drives, Hitachi. Uh, make sure when you do this that you're being very careful. Those uh, Livestrong bracelets, shout out to The Verge. Very sorry, forgot about my bracelet. Okay, so all jokes aside, if you guys are worried about um, accidentally introducing static electricity into your components, one of the things that you can do is ground yourself before you begin working. And what all you need to do is uh, make sure that you touch your power supply. It is important that you have the power supply plugged in, but just go ahead and like, just touch the metal casing and that should ground you. Okay, it looks like most of this crap is just IO front panel. So one of the other things I decided that I'm gonna do is take off this CPU cooler. I'm gonna put some fresh thermal paste on it. I'll be using Arctic Cooling MX4. Actually, take that back. I'm gonna be using Arctic Cooling MX2. I uh, prefer two a little bit better. Some people say that four is better than two. I'd argue that two is better than four. I've used both. They're within a couple degrees. This is uh, good quality stuff. Uh, okay. okay, so this is a Seagate drive. This is a one terabyte Seagate drive runs at, where's the RPMs? Doesn't say on this drive, but I imagine it's probably a 6400K RPM. So what I like doing is moving the drives closer to the bottom of the chassis. That way, if the chassis tips over for whatever reason, uh, the drives don't have to fall as great of a distance. It just, it also helps to keep a lower center of gravity. We'll put a one drive space between the two uh, just because these drives tend to generate heat as they're spinning up. I don't know what's installed on the drives. I assume one drive is probably operating system. The other drive is probably games or files or some sort of storage. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the 24 pin and we're gonna start our cable management. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route this 24 pin through the bottom here, up, have it come out through this hole, if you can see where my finger is, and connect to this 24 pin header right here on the motherboard. We need to get our CPU power up here. So that is this one. There just isn't enough room on this case to be able to route it through the back of the case. So I'm gonna have to route it up and over. Unfortunately, one of the USB headers at the front of our case is dead, but I don't know which one it is between these two. I'm just gonna plug this in and one of them should work. Okay, this is our SATA connector for the eSATA on the front. I don't know anybody that uses eSATA anymore, but um, you know, if somebody wants to connect a drive externally, I guess I'll go ahead and plug this in somewhere. I don't know what to do with all this. I know what I could do. I could route it along the inside of the case like this. And then connect it down here. I'm gonna plug this back fan into the fan controller so that um, she'll have a, the ability to adjust the fan speed from the back. The fan from the top though is gonna be controlled by the system. Okay, so now we're looking at the back side. Um, maybe this I didn't need to bring through. It looks like there's already plenty of SATA cables back here. I think this is for the graphics card. Okay, we're gonna route this 
through here. Actually, through here would probably be better. We're gonna do power for drives. All right, this we really don't need, so we could just bundle this. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna be mounted like this. See, the thing is that most modern power supplies are modular, so you only use the cables that you need. Unfortunately, a lot of the older power supplies are not. So in this case, we're gonna need to zip tie these up. We'll just tuck it in somewhere nice. Right there. That's where it lives now. I mean, most modern computers don't really need a DVD drive, but there is a DVD drive here. I don't know if she still uses it, but I'm gonna go ahead and connect it anyway. So it looks like we've got all of our SATA cables connected. So the fan control is gonna need power, and you can tell by the red and black. So this needs to be connected into power. So remember those front panel wires that I've been avoiding the whole time? Well, now I gotta plug them in. All right, well, that seems to be the entire front panel. Hopefully I connected everything right. If not, the system won't turn on, and I'll just have to troubleshoot from there. Okay, I did say that I was gonna take care of the processor, so let's go ahead and get this off. All right, wow, that is pretty pitiful. There's like barely anything on here. So in order to clean the thermal paste off the CPU, I'm gonna be using Arctic Clean. It's a two-part solution. This is the thermal material remover, and this is the thermal surface purifier. Now, if you don't have this or you can't afford it, simple rubbing alcohol from the store will be fine. Just get some rubbing alcohol and some Q-tips. All right, well, we can actually read it now. It's a, it's an AMD Athlon 2. All right, regardless of what you may have heard, all you need is a pea-sized amount of thermal paste. You don't need to do a line or an X or any of those special systems. A pea drop amount uses the least amount of thermal paste, which saves you money in the long run, and it provides proper thermal contact Make sure your CPU cooler is firmly pressed down and tighten. But I want to make sure the fan's connected to that, and that might be important too. A lot of modern motherboards will tell you where the CPU fan cooler uh, should be plugged in. In this case, it says CPU fan. Not much more obvious than that. All right, now the PC is complete. Time to power it on and see the moment of truth. Drum roll, please. I think I can reach it. All right. Where is it? Oh, <laughs> brought the power on the power supply. Try that again. All right, well, looks like I forgot to check the power supply. Okay, now there could be a number of things that are wrong. Um, let's not panic. Uh, first thing could be that I connected the front IO improperly. After all, it um, was kind of hard to read and I don't know if I necessarily connected the right uh, wires to the right pins. I hear this ticking sound coming from the power supply. Oh my God, it's a bomb! I'm just, I'm kidding, it's not a bomb. Um, I think what's happening is there's a fan in there that's kind of, you know, inside. And I don't know if the fan is the issue or if the power supply is dead. There is a way that we can test it. It could be that the front connectors were not connected properly. It could be that we have damaged hardware. So first things first, I'm gonna check to make sure that the power switch is connected to the right port on the motherboard. 
And then if that's not the case, uh, we'll then take a look at the power supply. We'll be right back. So I did have the connectors in the right place, but the ticking in the power supply still has me concerned. So my next course of action is going to be testing the power supply on the motherboard, doing a little trick to jumpstart it. So what I thought was going to be a simple PC repair turned out to be more complicated than I thought. Once I had plugged all the connectors in, I made this big assumption that the computer would just start working fine. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. So now comes the troubleshooting portion. Um, I don't know what is wrong with the computer, whether it's the power supply, the motherboard, um, you know, maybe the RAM is not inserted properly, maybe the RAM is defunct. So I didn't know what the problem was, but I did understand that I had to isolate each component individually and test it out. The first thing I wanted to look at was the power supply, and I did that by using the old paperclip trick or the staple trick that I introduced in the bubble wall PC. It's really simple. There is a green wire on the 24 pin connector. So you remove the 24 pin connector from the PC and you bridge the green wire to ground. Now, usually the green wire is like the third or fourth wire in the series. And when you do that, you should hear the hard drive spin up. Maybe some fans will turn on. And, and that's exactly what happened. So I know that the power supply is working. So the next thing to do is to try out the system. So I had a working power supply. Again, I used the paperclip method to make sure that the power supply was in fact working. And I plugged it in. I plugged in the 24 pin connector. I plugged in the eight pin CPU connector. I even plugged in the six pin PCIe connector for the graphics card nothing happened. Maybe there was something wrong with the front connectors. After all, it was kind of in a tight space. I wasn't sure. Maybe I connected the power switch to the wrong one. Uh, after looking up the motherboard online, I discovered that, nope, I did in fact have them connected into the right pieces. Here's something interesting that I noticed. When I plugged in the original power supply in the computer, I noticed a ticking sound. And what was even more unusual was that when I put my working power supply in, I plugged in the 24 pin connector. Again, I hear the same ticking sound. I did a little bit of research and it turns out that this is the sound of the power supply rapidly turning on and off. Sometimes it can be an indicator that some of the cables are connected improperly. And I thought, well, what could possibly be connected improperly? I've got the 24 pin in the right place. I've got the eight pin in the right place. The six pin is in the right place, but I've got this USB connector. And I noticed that there's multiple USB headers on the motherboard. So I decided to move it around and lo and behold, when I moved the USB, the system turned on. Yep. I was bested by a USB connector. The good news is, is that this not only did the system post, but it booted right into windows seven. Ugh. I even decided to add a few features myself. One of the things I did was I individually sleeved the CPU cooler. Why? Because I was kind of getting tired of those ugly looking cables and decided to give it a little bit of flair. Plus it's a uh, really good practice since I haven't been sleeving any power supplies or any cables in a while. Well, this computer case is ready to send out and a Modern Nations PC repair shop is officially open for business. Modern Nation PC Repair, this is Chris speaking. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What's a Geek Squad? You know what it sounds like? It sounds like a. Gr uh, hello? Hello? Well, looks like I picked the wrong business a little bit too late. Thank you so much for checking out this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the modern nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And Hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below, or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see ya.